Welcome back to CCRPG. We are uh, returning uh, to the planet of Moot after the players have, uh, you know, taken the time to tell us how they've gotten to where they are now and uh, go over their various upgrades, splurges, spends and acquisitions of resources and information. Now we're going to follow up on a very peculiar lead that happened, uh, you know, two episodes ago, one session ago. Uh, for Rock, as he found a very peculiar uh, casino chip uh, that someone had handed off to him uh, that had a uh, computer chip inside of it. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't eating fish or chips, nor did he have a bowl of chips available to him, so I couldn't go any deeper on the Inception. Um, chip session. Yeah. So, uh, but can I buy chips with it? You'll have to find out. Play to find out what happens. What, um, what, if, the, what if the chip contained the chip was chipped? Ooh, yeah, I don't know what the structural integrity of the chip was, so it is possible the chip was chipped. How much chip can a wood chipper chip? I think that you can find that out pretty effectively. I think you can measure that. I think that's yeah. it's not too hard to find out. Um, but uh, on that chip, uh, Rock found a advertisement for a casino in Moot that is known to be under affiliation control. Um, it is very popular. It is usually very crowded. And it, it now, uh, Rock having gone to scope the place out previously, he knows it is very well run and watched. Um, and uh, ultimately, it gave a date on the chip and had a digital signature on it. Um, so I wanted to see what you guys want to do to follow up on that as that's where we are now. We're hitting the morning of the date indicated on that chip. All right. We're going to a casino. Now, we should set a budget before we go. You know, just so we don't get carried away. Dying knows himself too well and doesn't trust himself with gambling. <laughs> how, how nice is this casino? Uh, it is, I would say, uh, upper class public, right? It's not like a private casino. It's not like only high rollers hang out there. But for a place where basically you're allowed in, like anyone can just walk in and play, uh, it's a fairly high class version of one of those. Is there a giant crocodile head on it? Like at the behind? Well. No one's going to get that reference. I, yeah. I mean, I didn't. Uh, sorry. I didn't at all. But, uh, You're my best chance, Bob. So, <laughs> uh, Unfortunately, I have no clue. Um, it's a One Piece reference. Oh. oh. I get you. Is that oh, from, I get it now. Yeah. Is that from one of the movies? No, it's Alabasta. Right? Alabasta. Okay. I haven't seen it it's in too long, crocodile. so sorry. Yeah. I mean, um, there, there is a casino movie in One Piece. so That's why I asked. I knew sure. there is one of those. I haven't seen those either. Um, so the re sorry uh, the, the reason i'm asking is um evelyn will ask like so do we gotta get dressed up or something like, uh, or can we can we just show up i mean i, I don't know if they have, like a dress code or something i i don't it's a casino so i mean you 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 probably want to change your overalls but beyond that i don't think they're picky i'm pretty sure they'll take your money regardless of whether you're in nice clothes or in poor clothes i mean oh. uh we're they're likely going to know we're there um, just by me walking in with the chip. I mean, uh, Torse crosses her arms and says, yeah, I think um, I think there's not going to be a problem going there. I'm pretty sure they're willing to fleece anyone for their money. Uh, you guys going to be OK? You, Do you want me to come with you, you or? I don't know. It's up to you. Hmm. I mean, the more the merrier. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Oh, I mean, this is a trap. I mean, we all know that, right? Yeah, it most likely is. Okay, yeah, I'm, I <clears> mean, <throat> Torse is just going to stay out gambling and not, you know, go with us anywhere else. We split up there. All right, well, I mean, that sounds fine to me. Um, she reaches down and grabs what seems to be like a little small fold up, like, uh, it's almost like slightly larger than compact size um, 
personal computer uh and then she will just slip it into her like she has a um she has like a large pocket on the side of her pant leg and she'll just batten up and like and i'll bring my stuff just in case and i'm just gonna fold my arms and I go i'm definitely leaving artemis here i'm not sure i trust her in a uh casino and I'm pretty sure she'd scare the shit out of everybody. I'm pretty sure they might not allow her. Wasn't there like a big like problem with AI's train to like count cards a few cycles ago? Yeah, I think I'm gonna solve that. I mean, it's, they made I a they made like a easy. they made like a big movie about it. There was like this ragtag group of heroes that would sneak into casinos and like trade off the AI as they were walking around, like bilking all the games. It was pretty good. You're talking about mm-hmm. that uh, that remake called Twenty One. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, like super old film. Yeah, the AI was named Twenty One. It was really interesting. Uh, yeah, that's definitely why I am um, not bringing her. Uh, also, I'm not sure I would trust her to I don't know do normal things or be normal or be quiet for that matter. So anything you guys want to do uh, before we head to the casino? Evelyn's going to come ready to go. Oh, Sorry, you can go. I was just going to change into some good overalls, which I might have. Like Evelyn is somewhat self-conscious of sh- showing up in oily, dirty overall. Uh, she always has at least one overalls. clean pair, right? Yeah. So this is the, yes. the you, you change out of the pair you've been wearing for three days into the one that's just been washed, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It, so, it was like thrown uh, in the corner because um I didn't think I'd need them immediately. Mm-hmm. Do you have clothes that aren't overalls? <laughs> uh coveralls. I mean there are clothes that don't wear that don't, yeah. don't need overalls. Uh I might. I mean I gotta I gotta look in my look in my bag and see what I've got. Um and I'll just kind of fish through and maybe I'll find like one nice top and a pair of pants that clearly has not seen the light of day in a number of years. I'll begrudgingly put them on. All right. What does that look like, Evelyn? Uh, probably like a um, tank top and maybe some cargo pants. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> They're not going to stop you. It's uh, the height of fashion over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if I'm going to get recognized while we're there. I apologize in advance if a swarm of fans, you know, slows us down at all. No, you don't have to apologize every time we go out. <laughs> Dying just rolls his eyes. Tell you what, if you get swarmed... I'll use the swarm to sneak off so I don't get swamped with you. <laughs> there you go. Sounds good. Has that actually ever happened? I mean, I mean, I imagine we've hung around Luvastro enough that, like, if it's happened in the last year, few years, I, we would have realized I it. I think I can safely say he's never been swarmed with fans. He's probably been recognized here and there a couple times, but just, like, probably more like, hey... You kind of look like that one guy and that one thing. I hated that movie. <laughs> <laughs> it sucked. If we if we were like more in the <laughs> core worlds, I'm sure he'd get uh, recognized more often. I'm sorry, we're way too out of you, out of the distribution range of your movies. So yeah. uh, sorry. This, this just wasn't uh, his target audience. <laughs> <laughs> not my demographic uh all right well yeah nothing nothing else for asher he's ready to go nope dine's ready all right so as you guys uh head to the casino um as you arrive out front um there are uh like large like a staircase ramp that kind of like leads up the staircases on either side and like a ramp going up the middle um and it is like it has like these old you know one of those like pillar type entries where there's pillars across the entrance and like a large open 
kind of like terrace that leads into an entryway. Um, there are people filing in here at all hours of the day. You guys are going relatively early in the day. Um, but there are still people going in and out constantly. Um, there are very noticeably like visible security on on here at all times. Um, they are very nicely dressed in like black suits with like white shirts and red ties, like all of them. Black suits, white shirt, red tie. All of them have like an earpiece in, sunglasses, and all of them are carrying automatic weapons. <laughs> Not on their back. So they they're look just, like they're just holding them at all times. Oh. Yeah. Um So they are they bald and do they have a barcode on their no, back of their necks? No. no. Um although if you do see one that's bald and has a barcode on the back of their neck, <laughs> watch out, that's the one that was replaced. Uh, <laughs> to get Wait, into the restricted the area yeah <laughs> why does a chef have a barcode on his neck <laughs> yeah um so no they they are they're a variety of different people um you know young old um every variety of person you see as guards but they all look like they take this job seriously um you know, most of them are just monitoring the crowd as they go in and out. There's like four stationed at the main entrance at all times. Um, you have heard that there have been attempts to steal from this casino. You have never heard about any successful attempts to steal from this casino. Um, who knows why? Uh, maybe there hasn't been one or maybe they've suppressed those ones. You could find out more if you look into it, but um, it is it is well known to be a place that the affiliation like prizes as one of its like prestige institutions that it's built on moot. Um, so as you go in, uh, it is just a barrage of sound as you go through the front door as just through the front door are where all the machine games are just from left to right wall to wall. It's all like the slot machines and the video poker and you know, a variety of things that you have uh, not seen in our time. Um, well, you have, but they weren't gambling in our time. Uh, basically, what you see is the giant pods that you can get into that simulate piloting a mech. So people can get in there and basically play against each other and bet on the match to see who will win. Um it can handle up to like 16 people at a time. So there's basically just this corner that has like these 16 training, like basically uh, rock. You would recognize these as basically training pods that they would use in the core worlds to like train people how to use mechs before putting them in an actual mech. But they've repurposed them for gambling. Um, and they're just like a recreational thing here in the casino. Um as you kind of funnel further in, uh, it, you see past where you are right now, it kind of uh, opens up into like uh, like a wider room where there's more space between everything, a variety of table games, and off to the side, you can see against the walls, there are like various skill-based games against the, the sides of the walls. Uh, the table games in the center of the room encompass... Uh, you know, all the all the types of like either you versus the casino or you versus the other patrons. So you see things like poker where you're playing against other people, but you also th see things like blackjack and roulette where you're just playing against the casino. Um, but yeah, I mean, it has all the amenities you would imagine in a well-stocked casino, plus a few extra things that are like interesting. So you guys tell me, what do you guys want to do here? Um. Oh. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I I doubt I have anything in interesting. I was just gonna say, kind of wander around and look at stuff for a while. Sure. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Actually. All right. I was gonna uh, hit the slots and uh, try my luck there. All right. So uh, Astro, uh, you will notice that there is a variety of slot machines here. Um. All of them are various themes. There's like a pirate themed one. There's like an old gangstery themed one, which you find as kind of funny, considering the affiliation is as close to like a gangster institution as exists in these parts. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's almost like a slot machine making fun of the people who own it. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, what are you what are you looking for in terms of a slot machine? 
Uh, the one with the brightest lights. Ah, uh, the one with the brightest lights is like yeah. is like uh, tropical themed. Um, uh, yeah. I'm sure you know what tropical looks like because you've been to planets that have recreational zones before. Um, but it is it is all palm trees and coconuts and like martinis and like you know just everything that it's a, it's a completely vacation vibes but it's all bright yep. and shiny um but yeah you can you can go ahead and play if you'd like to oh uh, another thought just occurs to me you know how like casinos have licensed slot machines yeah are there any slot machines that are licensed from one of astro's movies yes absolutely um, okay yeah there is there is one uh that is based off of a horror movie you were associated with where you played an unconvincing dracula in the movie it's not one of your <laughs> prouder movies um but uh you do remember it's like oh yeah i did sign over my image rights to that as you look at the machine there is a picture of you in bad vampire makeup as like the marquee at the top of the machine <laughs> is Astro recognizable that anyone who frequents this machine would recognize him? I would say yes. That's, that as, is as like an old lady, Whoa. as an old lady <clears throat> like goes, damn it, as her like little cup of coin she had next to her is empty. She like gets up to leave and turns and sees you, Astro. She like looks back to the machine and then looks at you and she like pushes past you like angrily with her shoulder as she like waddles out of the room <laughs> just to assume that he's like a publicity thing right yeah oh Probably. totally yeah, yeah. <laughs> i feel I'm like dime, to... dime would follow astro with this not to play but just because he doesn't want to leave astro alone in this place <laughs> and dine will just look up at that and he goes not your best movie was it <laughs> no not certainly not one of the ones i'm proud of uh <laughs> Where's Torse going, by the way? Uh, oh, Torse. I'll ask her, like, Torse, what are you planning on doing? Oh, yeah, Torse is like, uh, usually I like paying, playing like the complete chance kind of table games because I do not have any confidence in my ability to actually play a game. So she's going to head over to roulette if, uh, okay. if not interfered with. No, I wouldn't right. stop her. Yeah. All right. What about you, Rock? What are you doing? Uh, just wandering around, I think, with uh, Chimera. All right, cool. Well, I'll be over at the tables if you need me. I will be going very slow at it. Um, but it looks fun. Yeah, probably. If you Never need me, signal me. Okay. I don't know how you're going to do it. It's very loud in here. Yeah. She, uh, she, I'll figure something out. She nods at you and says, I knew you would. <laughs> and then she'll head off to the roulette table. Huh. All right. Yeah. I think after wandering around a little bit, um, I don't know if anything like obvious popped. We bring anything obvious. Otherwise, well, I think yeah. Evelyn would eventually... Sorry. Well, I did want to tell you, as you and Rock kind of wander around, you wander over towards the skill games and you see that there's a room kind of off to the side uh, that is it looks like uh, when I say skill games, there is a shooting gallery um, where you kind of like compete against other patrons to like put more shots on target and kind of bet on that. Um, and then there is also behind it an entire room that is built in with um like various what what seem to be uh piloting simulators like for ships um it's almost like you know how they have uh like those things that simulate like formula one racing and stuff like that uh there is a room full of things like that but for like racing spaceships um and there are like so many times a day, uh, they put people in these and you pay a premium to be one of the racers, but you can actually win a jackpot if you win a race. And then everyone else in the casino bets on who's going to win. OK, well, screw my original plans. I'll nudge um, Rock and say, like, you should you should you should do one of those races. You should probably do great. Um, you know what? I think you're right, which is why I shouldn't. I kind of don't want to draw a lot of attention here. Why? 
I mean, if anything, like in this town, there's probably other people who are good racers as well. You're not going to draw that much of attention. Maybe. I mean, you're probably right, but, but I mean, look, if you're I really got this getting... ship for a reason, somebody's looking for us, right? I guess, but I mean, I don't think they're going to be basing it off of someone who's a good pilot. Look, just go on, live a little, and if you get into trouble, I got your back. This really goes against everything I'm about with laying low, but okay. We're in in the middle of a casino in in, in a moot. Yeah, it's not exactly the most high profile places. All right. So I guess are you gonna I'm going do it? to try the racing thing. All right. Yeah. Um. So there is a race coming up. Uh, if you put the money down to be one of the racers, uh, you know, you'll be one of eight racers in the upcoming race. Um, okay. It is uh, based on a kind of um, a popular uh, racing ship. It's uh, it is a kind of um, what are the kind of races called where you have to like go point to point to point kind of thing? Relay? Maybe no. um, there's something something like that. Um, but it is basically uh, a navigational race where um, you you basically are going to be flying a simulator through an asteroid field, something that you have recent experience with, um, sure. where there is basically point to point to point uh, in this field. Uh, and the first person to make it to the last point uh, will win a jackpot that basically quadruples the amount that you put in. Um, and then, you know, everyone else who races, the person who comes in second place uh, gets, you know, 1.5 the amount they put in. And then everyone else gets nothing. Okay. Sound good? Something you want to do? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll try it out. I'll put down for it. Absolutely. Evelyn, what are you doing? Uh... I'm obviously not going to race because I'm not going to compete against Rock. But maybe I'll... um. I'll I'll put a modest modest wager on rock. Okay, sounds good. Something that if I lose is like I'm not gonna hate myself at the end of the day. Yeah, you put a little bit of tuna money down on the race. Uh, you it know. actually smells like tuna. <laughs> I hope not. You will get kicked out. Uh, you're adulterating your money. Uh, so rock, as you get in, uh, it is pretty high quality. Like you're surprised that the simulators they have here are this good. Um, it, you know, someone, someone with a pilot background like you, um, it is not, um, it's not, I wouldn't say it is, uh, one-to-one -one with the real thing, but you're surprised with how close it is. So you believe, even though maybe you haven't used a simulator like this before, you can pretty much just pilot it like you would actually pilot a ship and it should come out pretty, pretty close. Um, so because of your pilot background, I'm going to go ahead and give you accuracy on the roll. Uh, and it is going to be a pilot check. So what uh, what skill would you like to use? Oh, uh, well, let's see. Um, get somewhere quickly kind of sounds pretty accurate. So I think I'll just go with that. That does sound pretty good. Yeah, that sounds about right. So go ahead and roll your pilot check. Uh, I would normally have. So let me say first, this would normally have difficulty because the people you're uh, fighting against in this race are all very good. Um, they're the people who come here hoping to win the jackpot. But because you're getting accuracy from being a pilot, those are going to cancel out. So it's going to be a straight roll plus your modifier. Okay. An 11. An 11. Horrible, yeah, 11 total. Um, so, Graham, you smoke the competition. Um, and yeah, it is it is very quickly your your jockeying for like the first or second position. So you're in the money spot most of the entire race. Um, you do see that the other pilots you're competing against are all relatively good. Um, you're actually surprised uh, with how quickly these people are getting through these these asteroid fields. Um, 
As you go from point to point to point, though, the person who is like running in contention with you starts to play a little dirty. Uh, They're trying to like basically edge you into like crashing in or like completely disqualifying to get like get you off course and stuff. How do you respond? Um. I'm going to just, like, pretend like I get knocked off course even though I didn't and then drift behind them and then pull around to the other side and just pull ahead. All right, absolutely. Um, Go ahead and make another pilot check, please. All right, I'll call this one show off. That makes sense to me. Uh, 20. Nice. So... Uh, as you pull off this trick, you can tell that you you shook in them like they you, they took the bait. They were like, yeah, you're out of my way. And then as you loop behind them and then speed in front of them, you can tell they're just tilted. They're like not having it. So they go a little bit more aggressive on you. They're really coming at you enough that they completely lose sight of their own goals and just you you see the the fancy simulator version of sparks and scraps flying everywhere as they crash into an asteroid directly to your right. So they basically go from in the money to disqualified from the race for playing dirty. And mm. by the end of it, yeah, you you come out on top, you get first place and you quadruple your money you put in. And it costs a premium to get into this um, rock uh, from completing and and doing well in this. Uh, you're going to get reserves uh, that is going to represent your walking around money, essentially. It's not on a scale that you can buy like mech features with it or something along those lines. Um, But what I will say uh, is that you get um, you can access a uh, resource of some sort. So if you want, you can turn this money into access, uh, supplies, blackmail, uh okay. reputation so take a look at those and tell me what you want to do with like your extra walking around money that you've won today all right uh and i don't have to decide right now no no you you have mark it down yeah you have the credit chip that you can turn in later and you can decide what you do with that extra cash okay okay cool all right um evelyn uh you see rocks excellent display and uh because you're there watching everyone come out of the simulators when this is happening you see that the person who is obviously pissed off like uh, when you see the ship like crash into an asteroid you see a hatch open up early right because their ship is out of the race and this angry man just like gets out of the simulator and he just like kicks it and the second The second he does that, three people in suits swarm him and drag him out of the casino. Well, dang, they're efficient. They run a tight ship. I kind of look, I kind of watch him get dragged out. I kind of look at Astro and I say, don't kick the machine, no matter how much you you lose. (laughs) I mean, I, 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 I couldn't I couldn't kick a machine with my likeness on it. So <laughs> you don't need to worry about that. The dying the, just, dying just face palms. The, <laughs> the fangs on the Astro portrait are very obviously a different color than the rest of the teeth. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the the face yeah. makeup ends at the neck, so you can tell that his <clears throat> neck has more color in it than the rest of his face. It's a bad makeup job. <laughs> I was yeah, going to say, they, they next time, in your next movie, Astro, make sure you get a good makeup artist. We had a, a budgetary problem, so we had to cut the makeup department a little bit. That Duly noted. Is... Duly noted. All right, what else do you guys want to do here? I assume I made I made a bit of money off of. You made a um, little bit. It's nothing. It's nothing to scoff at. But you know, you yeah. were just betting on a winner. You probably got. You know, if you put a hundred down, you probably got one fifty back, kind of thing. That's that's perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. And I'll um cheer. I'll congratulate Rock when he exits the um simulator and say like, oh, see, that wasn't too bad, was it? Uh, I'll look around. Am I getting a bunch of attention? Uh, there are um attention. Uh, in that there are a bunch of people here 
who, when you get out, they're like, yeah, way to win me some money. Always bet on the new guy, you know? And then there are other people who are very obviously angry they lost money. So they see you, but it doesn't look like anyone recognizes you. No, yeah, no. I, I look around nervously and go, yeah, yeah, nice, nice and easy. No and, problem. And you see him go, woo, as they turn around to go cast in their bets, basically. Yeah. Uh, so, no, you didn't you didn't attract um, ongoing attention from these people. Sure. All right. Anyone Excellent. else? What else do you guys want to do here? Is there like a high rollers area? Yes. Yes, there is. Um, as the tables, the table games get further towards the back of the casino, you know, there are private rooms in the back of the casino. Um, but as the tables get further towards the back of the casino, it goes from, you know, tables with low stakes to higher and higher and higher stakes to tables that are like they look like they're only people who are who are gambling with significant money or at. Yeah. Um. Uh, I'll say to Rock, like, oh, what do you think we're looking for here? Yeah, so I say as you come up behind me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> cool. Where'd you come uh, from? Sorry. Yeah. Hey, Rock. Yeah. Rock, Rock okay. jumps like a foot in the know. air. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, uh, maybe there's some interesting activity going on, uh, on off that way. And I point to the high rollers table. Kind of give you a little bit of a look and go. I probably, um, I don't, at the moment, I'm not really looking for anything and waiting for something to come to us, but I could ask someone about the chip if we want. Uh, well, well, let's, uh, let's, I, I don't know who, who to ask, you know, and if, if we, maybe if we ask the wrong person, that could get us in trouble. Um, I just, just ask one of the chip turning people. I imagine something will go off if they go start to turn it in. Remember, there's right, well, there's a chip inside the chip. Well, I'm just going to scope out that uh, the high roller area over there. Uh, see what kind of clientele they got. Yeah, uh, go right. ahead and make me a pilot check comment. Okay, uh, let me see. What kind of good pilot check can I do? Um... So I could roll um, investigate or investigates more research. It's yeah. like on like long term research. That's less yeah. like uh, you would want something more like, um, you know, evaluate a situation style things. Yeah. Like spot yeah. If you have it. spot would be, be great if I had that, but I don't. Um, I suppose I could try to act unseen and unheard and stealthily or, observe uh, them, but <laughs> actually, what would probably be better for this is if you have read a situation. Do you have read a situation? I don't. Okay. Uh, I'm, I don't think I, I think I have anything, so I'm just gonna roll a d20. Okay, yeah, just um, go ahead and make a pilot check for me then. All right. Um, so I rolled a eight. Eight. Uh, so, uh, Astro, you check out the high rollers area, uh, and as you kind of like start eking closer to get more detail on it, uh, a man, um, who doesn't look like the guards, but is still dressed very properly, um, like one of the, one of the dealers or one of the people who is servicing the tables steps up to you and goes, ah, uh, Master Astro Jammin. Uh, <laughs> Asher kind of looks around and he's like, it, you, oh, uh, uh, you know me. Ah, we know uh, anyone of a certain level of celebrity that enters our casino. Uh, oh, well, excellent. Um, we're excited to have you here today. There. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> we're excited to have you with us today. Is there something I could help you with? Uh, no, just just uh, looking around, scoping out the place, seeing what game I might want to play next. Excellent. I hope you enjoy yourself. And if you need anything, someone will be paying attention to you personally at all times. Just wave us down. Wow. Uh, great. Uh, this is uh, the kind of service I've been uh, I've been sorely lacking this past year. Of course, sir. 
Um, okay. And Someone will be just, watching uh, us at all times. Got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we heard very different things there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'll take my uh, I'll take my leave from that guy. Okay. Um, and um, if I if I can uh, uh, work my way back to Dine, I think Dine, are you still kind of following me around? Uh, well, you wa- you walked away to talk to. Um, so you go check out uh, the high roller Brock. tables and yeah, stuff pretty and, much. Yeah. So I'll do. So I, I want to make a pilot check before he gets back, just to follow up with like. Not knowing what I know now, Dine kind of wanted to see if there was anyone paying attention to us, like outside of the people paying attention to Rock because he won. So what are you looking for? Just like people who seem to be watching us that other than the people who are obviously paying attention to our group because Rock just won them a shit ton of money. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, So I'm going to use spot. So spot details, object, or people that are hidden or difficult to make out. Yeah, please do. Um, This will be with difficulty. Um, plus two, minus, whoop, plus, minus one d six. Yeah, because there's just a lot of there's a lot going on at the moment. There is a lot going on here. Uh, I rolled a seven. Okay, so you look around, um, and it's very easy to spot the people who are kind of in suits and around. It's hard to tell if they're paying attention to you guys specifically or if they're just paying attention to the floor. Um, you do note, uh, even from this failed check, um, there are. Yeah, this is a casino. There are eyes in the sky. You just... Right. It's hard for you to tell if there is anyone specifically paying attention to you guys. Okay. So yeah, I was going to do that even before I learned what I did, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll uh, walk back to Dine and I'll say, So, uh, turns out my reputation precedes me. Watch this. And uh, Dine holds up his hand in the air. (laughs) Uh, A woman uh, steps up. Uh, She is holding like a tray that has a bucket and a bottle of champagne in it in ice. Uh, She has a towel over one arm and steps up and says, "Ah, yes, Master Astro Jammin, can I help you? Yes, uh, a champagne for me and my friend here, please. Oh, of course. She grabs a couple of fluted glasses, places them on the tray pours one uh, into each glass, fills it about like three-fourths of the way up, and then hands you each a fluted glass of champagne. Uh, oh, thank you, kindly. It confused. <laughs> I feel like this is probably going to draw more attention to us than the racing. <laughs> Everyone's and- watching. Everyone <laughs> is looking at Dine and Astro now. Um, and uh, when, when she leaves, I'll say, so if we're hoping to... Uh, be on the down low. I think I kind of screwed that up for us. Then it's why hard did being you... famous, you know? <sighs> you know, the fact that there is this many people who are paying attention to you out in the middle of, well, nowhere is actually kind of surprising. Well, the staff seem to know who I am. I'm not sure if all the clientele are familiar with my work. Unless they were playing that god awful machine over there, he points to vampire you, machine. You you point at it as someone is pulling the lever and hits the jackpot, and you hear in a in a weird simulacrum of Astro's voice going, <laughs> "I'm going to suck your blood!" <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, uh, I love it. I'm just sorry, like, Astro, but you can't give yourself the, the uh, luck. It's, it uh, just doesn't work out that way. Am I around to hear this bit? <laughs> you can be. I I, I I immediately start cracking up. <laughs> I'll say that uh, that sounds uh, like that, that sounds like that was taken from an outtake. I I don't remember my delivery being that stiff. You you I also do, you, know, you also hear microphone noise at the end of the take as if they didn't clip it properly <laughs> when they put the audio in there. Right, uh, Astro. I I, I stand I stand corrected. I am gonna see one of your movies. And it's gonna be this one. <laughs> uh, out of all the machines they could have <laughs> licensed out of all the movies they could have licensed to a machine they had to pick that one it was probably the cheapest one to license it was <laughs> well, anyway uh, uh, I guess suffice it to say if there's someone 
that is looking for us and they know who I am, I don't think they're going to have too much trouble finding us. Dine just shrugs. Well, uh, it is what it is at this point. Might as well enjoy it, right? And I, I clink my glass to your champagne glass. I'm nowhere near either of them. No, not even <laughs> right. close. Okay, just making sure. Yeah, no, I assumed you were staying away from this. I, I caught that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I just, I just, <laughs> I figured I'd follow the chaos, the chaos of Astro. <laughs> I. I would just say, uh, if either of you want to do something a little more uh, secretive, you should probably uh, not be with me. I'm happy to play the distracting celebrity if that helps. <laughs> Let's see what comes up first. <clears throat> I'll drink my champagne. Mm, not bad. Are, are are you getting charged for that? I don't think so. I think you know I'm a celebrity, so do, like. After do, do you do you want do you want to check if you're being charged for those things? Evelyn, Evelyn, you don't understand how celebrity works. Do I'll, you? I'll, I'll immediately I'll immediately ignore Astro and turn toward the assistant. Say like, so are, are we being charged for this? They're, they're not there anymore. They handed Astro his champagne, and then uh, I, I will I will take the the champagne. Chug it. Hold hold up Astro's hand again. Summon for another glass. Yes, I. Yes. You took you took my champagne and chugged it. Yes, and then held your hand okay. up. <laughs> I think I think there's gonna be a contested uh, skill check going on here or something. Are, are you really gonna fight over a, a, a flute of champagne? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God. Okay. This is the first time okay, Comet has been treated like he wants to be treated in like yeah. this campaign. So Yeah, I'm not letting you take take my champagne. Okay, we're doing if I this. can help it. Alright, you guys uh, can both pick a skill trigger and roll off against each other. I actually have a great skill trigger for, for this situation, uh, like which I never get to use. Um, is it like being a celebrity or something? Um, take control. Oh, actually, that that does apply here. Yeah, it because does. you can take yeah. control of like a like an object two people are fighting over. Uh huh. Um, all right, all right, Evelyn. What I are you rolling against them? Fifteen. Uh, all I got is um. I was going to stay cool, but that doesn't really work. Well, You're not am... staying cool. That is not what Evelyn fine. is doing right now. <laughs> fine, fine. Um, <laughs> That's the opposite of I, what I, Evelyn's I, doing. I, I got nothing. I'm just going to do a flat D20. Go for it. As this happens... 17. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> As this happens, Donnie just takes a step back and lets it happen. Uh, the after, power of the narrative compels me. After a brief struggle, Astro, uh, Evelyn, who's hands are surprisingly more vice-like than you thought, is just holding yeah. your wrist in a vice grip as she chugs your champagne and holds your arm up. <laughs> uh, a just attendant pops up and says, Ah, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Jammin, is there something amiss? Is there something we can help you with? As they no, look at no, Evelyn. Uh, I actually, does we like to ask a question? Evelyn immediately switches to like a really pleasant voice. We oh, the, these this champagne is is it complimentary or are we being charged for this? Oh, of course it's complimentary. Oh, okay. Asher just looks at Evelyn and is like, "See, I told you so." Okay, and I'll just take a step back. Is there Thank anything you. else I can help you with? Not at all. I apologize for my friend here. Oh, um, not at all. She smiles like uh, at you, uh, Evelyn, in the very I'm doing a service job and have to smile at you way. Yeah. I will give her a tip, though. OK, uh, she Don't appreciates. Yeah, she, she appreciates that. And then, yeah, what steps away? Oh, damn it. I should have asked her for another champagne. You chugged mine. At this point, Dine will just hand Astro his champagne and he goes, you can just take mine. Oh, thank you. I could call her back, but I, now I feel embarrassed. <laughs> As he drinks your sh champagne. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you, Evelyn, uh, there are things about being a celebrity that normal people just can't understand. 
Yeah, no, I, I can I can agree to that. I just don't <laughs> understand how celebrities work. Used to be like this all the time, you know. People just give me stuff, you know. Half the time, I don't even know what to do with it. Well, here you go. I'll hand I'll hand him the empty sh- champagne glass. See, I have no idea what to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> then, I'll, then I'll walk away. <laughs> Dinal just sighing. He goes, "Okay, shall we try and figure out why we're he- why we're here?" Oh yeah, yeah. Well, that's why we're here. I was, I was gonna check out the uh, high rollers area, see if there's any any one of note there um, that could be uh, could be related to to us in some way. It's your uh, but greatest I, rival. <laughs> but I but I cause too much. Uh, I create too much attention, so maybe one of you would rather scope out that area. I think uh, Rock wanted to ask about the chip, so. I think I'm just going to play more of the vampire machine. All right, you go, you go back to it, just hopelessly plugging away at it. Just yeah. You just constantly keep getting, like, uh, you know, wine glass, wine glass, you know, uh, shattered wine glass on the floor and being like, damn it. <laughs> what is a man? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Pitiful pile of secrets. Um, so, uh, Rock, while this kerfuffle has been happening, what have you been up to? Uh, just walking around, keeping a paranoid out, uh, eye out, looking to see if anyone's up looking at me or going to approach me, that kind of thing, for a little while. Um, I'll swing by and check on Torse once or twice. Uh, uh, and then do, like... Uh, go ahead. Rock, uh, no one approaches you at first. You just are walking around. Everyone is just playing their stuff. It just kind of looks like you're looking at all the table games to see what game you want to play, almost. Um mm-hmm. As you navigate back towards over where Torse said she was going, she's not at the roulette tables. But you do hear, um, like, some excitement and some loud people coming from the craps tables. Uh, and as you turn your gaze over there, somehow Torse is now the one who's shooting the dice, and everyone is going crazy. She's just like, she like of looks course. she looks so fucking confused. She has no idea what's going on and they just keep handing her the dice and yelling and screaming and cheering and she's she's like, oh, "Okay." And then she takes the dice and like throws them at the table and then you hear her go, "Yeah." Woo! Uh I just kind of give this like half smile confused look like concerned almost. Like, "All right, well, okay." Um and then after about maybe an hour of that, does anything happen in that time? Uh, no. I mean, things develop. Uh, eventually, Torse gets out of there, sees you kind of like wandering around and walks up to you and says, I, I, had, I had no idea what I was doing, but everyone seemed so happy. So I just kept rolling and they wouldn't let me leave. Uh, did anyone hand you anything like a stack of chips or anything like that? Did you put any down? Yeah. And she holds up like a little duffel bag they gave her. Um, (laughs) Okay. Holy crap. (laughs) She's like, they were getting too heavy. Yep. Let's go. Let's go turn those in. Should we? I think we should maybe, maybe not bet more of that. She shrugs. Okay. Oh no. As we're walking, I'm like, how much is that? Uh, you do a quick accounting and about as much as you made winning the jackpot on the racing game. Nice. Okay. Well, we know who to take to casinos. <laughs> she she has she has enough money to, to pay for bribes and various equipment. She has she has a point of reserves that she can use, sure. basically. <laughs> sure. Um so when we go to the counter, I'll let her turn hers in first and just like stand behind her. Yeah, you know? she steps up and the people are really nice as they're taking her chips. They're explaining everything to her and they're giving her her slip for, you know, like this is, you know, what she got. This is, you know, what the what the counter says. And she's like nodding along like she gets it when someone actually explains it to her. But she didn't grok it just from like intuiting it. Um, yeah. And she's like, 
like you can see her going from confused to excited as she understands how much money she won. Uh, and she turns out to you and she's like, oh, we should come to the casino more often. <laughs> yep. Uh, Does this happen every you. time? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I'll walk up and just say like, uh, I just have this one chip, but uh, there doesn't seem to be a number amount on it. Would you mind looking at it for me? Uh, as you like slide the chip under the like the little partition glass to the uh, teller, um, they take the chip and they pick it up and they can tell immediately that it's not a normal chip. You can tell that they instantly recognize that it is something, but you're not you're not sure like it's it doesn't look like any of the denom- denominations you've seen people betting with. But they don't they don't act weird about it, nor do they say anything strange about it. They just take it as if like, yes, of course. But you see them take it and they plug it into their computer next to them. Um, and out of the computer, a little ticket prints out and they tear off the ticket um, and they say, ah, yes, thank you. It seems like your reservation is ready. Um, people seem to be filing in now uh, and they pass a ticket under the glass to you. Okay, I take it and take a quick look at it. Um, Just off of a cursory glance, it seems to be like an admission ticket to kind of a a private game in the back rooms of the casino. Okay, it doesn't really say anything or have any rules or anything about Uh, it. It has your name on it. Um, It says it is for private room A7. Um, And it says that the party will be 10 people. All right. Um, it doesn't say like bring bring anyone or anything like that, right? Just uh, my name. It is like an it, it's like a single for you ticket, basically. Okay. Um, I'll show it to Torse. No. Oh. Uh, what's that? Looks like you got an invite to something. It looks that way. Um, I'll I'll ask the ticket taker. Uh, is I is my first time. Uh, is it okay if I bring anyone? Uh, you know, I can uh, ask the concierge that is in charge of your room. Uh, traditionally, it's just whoever's printed on the ticket, um, unless someone else is playing with you, or if there is a guest on the guest list. Uh, give me a moment. I'll pull up the guest list for you. Sure. Um, and then you see her type in a few things on her teller machine, and then she goes, hmm. Uh, It doesn't look like there are any guests on the VIP list, just the attendees. Okay, so no plus one. Uh, Like I said, I can phone your concierge for the room to ask. Uh, Would you? Oh, of course, sir. Give me just a moment. Okay. Uh, And you see um, that she picks up, like, the phone uh, in, like, her little cubicle. Um, And when she does, though... a a weird sort of like effect happens where all of a sudden everything from her side of the glass goes silent. Like some sort of effect happens that seems to almost like partition off the sound from her area. I'll turn to uh, Torse and be like, I have no idea what's going on here. Um, If they only let one person in, you want to come? Yeah, it's fine with me. Sounds... Maybe, like, why we came here. Yeah, but I just kind of expected things to go down differently. Uh, Yeah, I get you. So did I. You see the the teller, like, nodding on the other side of the phone. She says a couple of things, nods again. She waits for a little bit. She says something. She smiles, and then she hangs up the phone. Um... And then the the weird, almost like airless kind of sound that's coming from her side of the room just like turns off again and it just sounds like normal noise again. Um, and she goes, ah, yes. Yeah, so I was able to phone the concierge from your room. Um, they checked with the um, what would be the word? The organizer. She checked with the uh, organizer uh, of your event and they said that they would allow you a plus one. I ch- nod. And then kind of shrug a little bit and then go, okay, uh, uh, when does the ticket say it is? Uh, It is starting in like 30 minutes or so. 
Um, okay. But it doesn't, it's not like a requirement to be, It's. it just says like the game starts in 30 minutes. It doesn't have okay. like a be here by or anything like that. But the teller did say people are filing in now for it. Okay. Um, well, let's go tell the others and head up there, I guess. Yeah, they'll want to know. This seems odd, right? A little bit. <clears throat> and then I'll start heading out towards the others. What does Rock and Torsay find you all doing when they come out? So Astro has had a couple drinks in him now, so he's a little tipsy. Uh, and he's currently uh, seems to be uh, arguing with the Dracula uh, version of him on the slot machine. It's like, come on, just give me one jackpot. I know you could do it. Um, Meanwhile, Dine is trying to keep get Astro to sit back down and stop arguing with himself. <laughs> He uh, spends you, it you, you, and, you as another failed um, as another failed roll on the roulette on the uh, little on the. Uh, uh, what are they called again? Slot, slot machine slots. comes up. Um, uh, it triggers like another voice line from the machine uh, and you just hear Astro in weird voiceover go. You'll never take me dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. That's <laughs> amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> Uh, Astro kind of chuckles to himself and he's like, ah, yeah, that's a good line. Uh, Evelyn's probably Evelyn's at one of the card tables just maybe like blackjack, something simple. But she's half distracted by this um, scene of Astro arguing with his vampire machine so she's not yeah, doing you're probably well. Yeah, you're probably at like the low stakes table yeah. that's right near where the exactly. slot machines are so you can keep an eye on them and you're just you're basically just playing nickel blackjack right where it's like you're kind of just there to like lose nickels slowly over time as you play as you play blackjack right i just, I just motion with my fingers over towards her to like come on over here yeah i'll finish uh the current hand and i'll walk over all right yeah you uh you head on over uh what, what's up so uh, the chip got me this. Uh, this ticket is some sort of invitation to some game or something. <laughs> Ten other people are supposed to be registered to be there. What What game? Cards? Racing? What? I don't know. I have no idea. They just said it was a private event. But why you? I don't know. And, and not, not there's anything wrong with you, but I'm just saying it's like, it seems kind of random, you know, just to give you a tic- ticket for this. I don't- Maybe I, I I I have no answer. All right. Do you do Do you want backup? I mean, well, what I do we do? Asked if I could bring a person, they said I could bring one. I was gonna bring Torse just to keep an eye on her, but heck, I mean, maybe she should be the one playing, given her luck. She you I... saw her by the craps table then too, huh? Yeah. Well, you know, word gets around. She shrugs. Hey, rock. Want a champagne? Well, well, de- we're definitely we're not like right next to you. Oh, yeah. I the next time drunk. that someone walks by to give him champagne, I'm just going to uh, calmly ask them, I think he's had enough, or tell them I think he's had enough. <laughs> uh, the the server who comes by and, like, uh, like responds to Rock says, uh, yes, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Jammin, um, the uh, complimentary uh, champagne is no longer available, but we did bring you some aperitif. Um, and she hands you a, like, warm little, uh, it looks like some baked pastry. Ooh, I'll take one. She, Ooh, like, she, she, like, she, like, smiles, uh, to dine, like, we know how to handle this, and, like, walks off. <laughs> I'll just nod, I'll just smile and nod at her, and thanks. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, well, um, maybe this is just a game. Maybe somebody heard about me or heard about us. Maybe this is some sort of invitation to a job, and, and this is the weird way this casino goes about it. But I could see that. I mean, it is affiliation run, but the, we have contacts with affiliation, you know? I thought they'd just contact us that way. Well, what better way to have privacy than in a private room in a casino surrounded by, I'll just kind of like motion to all of the guards. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess if you if you want something in a place completely under your control. And if you have money, usually I think those people tend to have a, a flair for the theatrics. Yeah, that makes sense. Here's hoping that's all it is. I should probably uh, stay with I'll motion to Astro him just to make sure he doesn't do anything silly until he sobers up. So is it still the plan that I go in with Rock? I guess. Uh, I mean, if we're guessing it's a job, it might be helpful for me to be there because I, you know, do a lot of our planning. But if one of you wants to be there, if there's like some tactical (laughs) things that need to be talked about, it might be better if one of you are there or who knows? Maybe they're going to try and shoot us, in which case, well, we're already sending rock. That's who I would normally send in that case. She like um, looks into the which, middle we distance. We didn't mention it, but what do we have for our arm, like arms? Weapons? Uh, if you have uh, a weapon that would be visible on your body, they would not let you have walked in with it. Uh, if you have a weapon that would be detected on your standard weapon detector machine, they would not let you in with it. If you have something that is very disguisable, you might have been able to get in with it. But they they have guards looking when you walk in, and they also make you walk through. Um, like a machine that scans you sure. when you walk in as well. So it had to be pretty darn hidden to get in here. Okay, so they 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 probably have my pistol then. I would assume so. Okay, I, I well. didn't bring anything. All right then. Uh, yeah, I guess let's go. All right. Um, Astro sees you all talking, and he wanders up, and he's like. Do you think they have a spa here? I could really use a facial. You know what? I, I'll ask. I'll ask. And he goes off to flag down. The, you, you just uh, see Astro detective. wander off to go deal with a server. And... Yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe, just maybe. sighs and follows after him. Okay, you got it? Um, yeah, okay. I got it. Hey, uh, Evelyn, as we're going in, I know Astro's having fun, but I want you and Dine to stay on task in case we call for you, okay? Yeah, no, just... Uh, do we have kind of communicators or anything like that? Or not really? How how, how would you um? Yeah, just I don't know how to we'll how figure to reach us. I out. don't know, okay. but if you hear me or Rock yelling <laughs> "help," then I think you should do something about it. Fair enough. Yeah. Um. We'll um. We'll, I'll keep I'll keep one eye on Astro and another eye on everyone else. How's that? Thanks, Evelyn. Also, uh, I'll point to. Uh, Torse's little ticket, and why don't you uh, cash this out for us? Uh, you know, just in case we don't have a chance to. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll take she'll it. she'll hand it to Evelyn. Uh, you see that the bottom line is a lot of money. Well, it's a good thing I got these cargo pockets, I guess. <laughs> You're. Just- <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't imagine anything else but, like, the kid who wore cargo shorts but then stuffed them too full with stuff so that they're, like, yeah these, yeah. yeah, these giant bulging pockets on the <laughs> side of their cargo shorts. It is a little bit like that, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel like Evelyn's a little more self-aware, though, to you not make it obvious. Little, like a little chain on it. No chain. Uh, I'm, a little, I'm a little past that, at least. <laughs> that was Evelyn in her early twenties and late teens. Not yeah, Evelyn 100%. today. Yeah. Yes. Now, now the chain is in her heart, <laughs> and the spikes are on the mech. Um, <laughs> yes. So, uh, Rock, as you and Torse uh, head towards the back rooms of the casino, um, yeah, uh, it is. It is like. Uh, well watched back in this area. You do see kind of like immediately that like there are people watching who goes in and out of here. And while not everyone who walks through these areas is like immediately accosted or like talked to by staff, you can tell people on the staff are watching. And like if they see someone who they don't think should be here, they approach them and like ask for something. Um, You also can tell that back here towards the private rooms is where things spider off to go to other levels. Like there's probably like a security room, you know, upstairs somewhere and like private rooms for the affiliation to do business here and stuff like that. That's on an upper floor or something. Um, Mm -hmm. 
But you can tell that there are other like hallways and rooms that are for like employees back this way. Um, okay. But then there's the private rooms in the direct back. And as you approach there, um, there is a person who will step out and talk to you both and uh, will say, ah, yes, welcome. Can I help you? Uh, as we were walking up, is it just Torse and I, by just the way? Just you and Torse. Okay, I'm going to whisper to her. Anyone says anything about Aster Uprising, just stay quiet and I'll handle it. What's that? Uh, I'll explain later. That, okay, that's fine. Uh, and then we walk up to the guy and he said, what again? I'm sorry. Ah, uh, yes, sir. How can I help you? Uh, and I'll just hold the ticket up to him. Ah, uh, yes, I think your party is mostly arrived. If you would follow me. Uh, this is my first time. Anything I should expect? I'm not sure. Um, perhaps your uh, group's organizer can explain it better when you arrive. Uh, we have rented the room to them. Uh, I'm sure you'll be in good hands once you get there. Okay. He, like, smiles reassuringly to you. Is like, don't worry. If you need the services of one of the staff, one will be on hand in the room with you at all times, and there will be people outside the door. So the organizer to this is not related to the casino hotel? Oh, no. Someone uh, rented the room from us for a private event. Oh, okay. All right. Good. Uh, I'll follow him in. All right. So as you guys go back to room, I believe I said it was a seven. Um, it is a little bit further back on the left hand side of the back of the casino. Um, there is exactly seven rooms on both sides of the casino because lucky sevens. Um, as you get to the farthest back private room in the left side of the casino, um, the uh, concierge will open the door for you. Um, it is a well-appointed room. There are, um, like, vases with, like, very vibrant-looking, like, plumage. Like, uh, like, that's a bird. What do you call foliage? There's, like, with very extravagant-looking foliage uh, coming out of it. There are, like, portraits on the wall of who you can only assume are affiliation members because they look very, like organized crime posing for a picture kind of pictures. Sure. Um, um, there are, um, in, in, in a lot of people's opinion, I'm not sure how rock goes on this, but kind of gaudy sort of like statuary um, that, that are like, go towards gilded and gold more often than not. So there's a lot of like gilded statues in here of various things. Um, robots like you see, you see some uh, MCs uh, kind of like depicted in gold statuary. Um, you see like just what is funny is a statue of a pile of coins made out of gold depicting gold coins. Right. So it's like a statue of a stack of gold coins, but it's a statue because they're all glued together. Um, but yeah, it's it's a relatively gaudy room um, in the center of the room is a large rectangular table um, that has, you know, kind of like the the felt sort of top that you would expect from like a, a, a like a nice card table. Um, it is made of like a nice rich red wood um, all the chairs around it are very nice. Um, but this is in stark contrast to the people you see in this room. Uh, over half of whom do not seem even close to as fancy as the, <laughs> the least fancy thing in this room. Um, they are all people who are wearing like padded jackets, uh, bandanas, um, you know, they have they have like warm clothes on, um, you know, utility clothes, what you, you would wear if you were going into the field, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, there are a couple who are wearing things that are marginally nicer than that, uh, who are wearing what you would uh, uh, like note as like. Country chic, right, who are wearing like button up shirts and like, um, you know, but still like like a nice pair of jeans and button up shirts and stuff like that. Um, most of these people still have like, you know, a jacket on or something like that. Um, 
Do but, I recognize any of these people from like other mercenary groups or hearing about them or having met them or anything like that? Yes, in the area? you do, um, but not from the area. Okay. From a long time ago. Okay. Yes. Um, there are two people in this room you would recognize. Uh, the first one is Verve Red. Um, he is one of the older people in the room. Uh, he is at the head of the opposite end of the table. Um, he is an older man, um, but not like feeble older. Uh, he's like maybe in his 50s um, and looks tough as fucking nails. Um, he is bald uh, with a little bit of hair on the sides uh, around his ears. Um, and he is one of the people who is dressed moderately nicer. He has like a button down shirt on jeans and he has like a a like. Uh, a nicer leather jacket on, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and the other person uh, you recognize in here is named Cotto Fringe. Uh, they're seated along the left side of the table. Um, they are a younger uh, person, um, you know, maybe a year or two older than you, but in your same generation, basically. Um, they are one of the people who's basically they're as close as they could get to wearing like battle fatigues, right? They're wearing like um, they're wearing like a like a tough jacket that seems to have some patches on it. Um, they're wearing like well worn jeans. Um, their undershort is just like a t shirt that's like tight fit to show off their like very fit physique. Um, they have a bandana on. Uh, holding back their hair. Um, they have like long hair going into a ponytail on the back and are wearing like shades that are yellow tinted. Okay. And I recognize them. You recognize both of them and they see you instantly when you walk through the door. Okay. I won't say anything right away, but I'll just kind of walk in and, and look at them. Clearly noticing them too. They both like nod to you as you come in and sit down. Um, the attendant, like as they open the door for you, leaves. Um, there are three empty seats left at the table. Uh, you will notice that Verve Red um, is kind is uh, actually shuffling a deck of cards. Okay. Uh, I'll just ask them uh, how long have you guys been here uh it looks like verve is going to respond uh and then kato responds first and says too fucking long looks angrily kind of, at verve's direction just kind of nod a little bit like all right there is something going on here you this is these some of these are people you know there are one, two, three, four other people at the table you don't you have not seen before, but they are in similar attire as the two people, you know, so you assume, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but what I will say is um, that uh, there is a vibe at this table. It's like one of those things where you feel like you've walked in on people who were having a difficult conversation and maybe not everyone's on board. You know what I mean? Sure. Oh yeah. There, totally. There's some stress in this room. <laughs> Torse like looks at you urgently as you walk in the room. Uh, I'll just kind of whisper to her. Uh, I think we're okay. Um, unfortunately, this might be what I'm thinking about. So uh, just just keep an ear out for what's going on, I guess. She like nods. Do you guys go to fill in some seats? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, what happens uh, is it is a little silent for a little while uncomfortably silent do you say anything um are uh ver and kato or kato 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 like uh, uh short for ricardo oh uh, okay are ver and kato uh but they pronounce active. it kato like with a with a ka yeah okay 
Uh, are they still active, to my knowledge? As far as you're aware, they were when you last knew. Okay. Uh, then I will ask them, like, are, are you guys still active? I, I kind of left, so I don't know what's going on. Ver shuffling the cards kind of like sets them down in front of him and goes, yeah, yeah, we are. I don't understand why I'm here, and I assume, and I'll kind of talking to Ver, but motioning towards the others a little, kind of a little bit, like look over at them like they're related. These are all people we trust. Okay. I want to wait for our last guest to arrive before we have this discussion. Uh, and who's speaking? Uh, that's Verve. Verve, okay. He kind of looks like he's organizing this, though. Yes, it does. Okay. All right. Uh, after a few minutes, um, there is uh, a little bit of like motion behind the door. Uh, and in, uh, like, a, the concierge lets a new person in. And uh, they are uh, actually... I don't know why I didn't put them on a more recent page than this. Uh, they are someone uh, that you do know, um, or at least know tangentially. They are your contact with affiliation. Um, that that your team has used um, when you were running smuggling op operations while you guys were laying low for the last year. Uh, mm -hmm. Her name is Jalen Mara. Um, she is a affiliation member who you know um, has sympathies um, for your former group um, because she used to be a member before... She decided it didn't make enough money for her. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, as she comes in, uh, everyone kind of like nods to her. She is dressed entirely different than everyone else in the room. Um, she is wearing a suit like all the other affiliation people in the casino are, but her seems a little bit more casual than like, she's not, she's not wearing a like uniform on the clock suit. Uh, it's a nice, like darker blue suit. Um, she has a, like, um, what are those things called that, uh, like a pocket square, you know, in the pocket of the, of the breast of the shirt. Um, oh man. Uh, I, God, I knew what those were. But like a, a yeah. cummerbund or something? Or? Well, it's like a no, it's like a pocket square. It's like, uh, yeah. you know, the little the little napkin that sticks up out of it that looks nice. It yeah, matches. Yeah, it matches her tie. She's wearing like a nice tie um, that's like blue and black striped. Um, and she has kind of like a scarf over the back of her neck um, that is like a dark kind of like furry onyx kind of thing. Um you're not sure what it is, but she looks like she's glamming, right? Like she she's wearing very nice clothes as she walks in and she sure. is all I'll smiles. Nod to her. Yeah, she is not to her in recognition. She is all smiles when she walks into the room. Like you can tell that she notices everyone's weirdly foul in the room, but she walks in just with a huge grin on her face. She nods to you in response is like, oh, glad you could make it. How you doing, Rock? Uh, good. Good. You? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm glad you can make it. There is something in the air tonight, and I like to think of it as opportunity. <sighs> and then she comes and sits down at the table. I lean over to Torse and say, remember what I said about the theatrics? <laughs> Torse nods, like, knowingly, like, yeah, fuck. <laughs> um... So you can tell that her presence has pissed off very obviously Kato. As soon as as soon as she walked in, Kato just gets angrier. They are they are not happy uh, that they are that she is here. Um, but uh, as the person who came in closes the door, um, you will notice that the party is smaller by three than what was on your invitation. Um, there are seven people including you and then you brought torse extra right so she wouldn't have counted for the original 10 
Um, so there are people missing here. Two, three, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight people here. So there's two people missing from what you assumed there should be. Mm-hmm. Uh, eight, okay. eight invitees. There's nine people here with Torse. Um, sure. So you're not sure why, but you do know that there were group of ten was printed on your ticket. Yep. Um, so as the door closes, um, Verve just starts dealing out cards to everyone at the table. All right. Um, you tell very quickly that this is just, you know, something that they would all play, you know, in between, you know, various activities. This is kind of like a like a camp wind down kind of game. It's very similar yep. to like stud poker, right? Like, you know, you just kind of play with whatever you have on you. Oftentimes it isn't for money. They have chips, but the chips don't really represent anything. It's just to keep track of who's winning. Um, mm-hmm. And they start playing for a little bit. Um, and by playing, they don't get very far before they start talking. But just in the fact that, like, you have long enough to recognize what game they're dealing out before anyone starts talking. Mm-hmm. Um, so everyone gets their cards. You can tell they've dealt Torse in, by the way, since she's sitting at the table. Um, and uh, everyone's like picking up their cards and they're they're going along with this kind of like uh, this, what they're doing here. And after the cards are all passed out, everyone's like looking at them, you know, Verve uh, looks over um, to to see what Jalen's doing. Jalen's just happily looking at her cards and uh, Jalen noticing that everyone's being really quiet and kind of looking at her and goes, well, it's not my fault you're all acting like the dead. Jeez, cheer up. What is wrong with you? Uh, <laughs> everyone's like, grumble, 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 grumble. Um, and, well, yeah. I, for one, uh, am doing fine. Won a bunch of money downstairs and am just confused. Uh, this environment is pretty normal from what I remember, though. <laughs> uh, this is this actually gets Kato to laugh, uh, not like in a in a super jovial way, but in a kind of like <laughs> uh, kind of under their under their uh, under their breath while they're picking up their cards. Um, and then Verve speaks up. How you doing, Rock? I kind of shrug and go, like I said, confused. Right. Well, uh, we heard that you're, uh, you and your outfit are operating again. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're active again. Just recently. People are, like, dealing out cards, and, you know, this is happening over, like, like, the, the most casual of casual games, right? Like, everyone can kind of, like, pretty much default this game if someone throws in two cards it's very obvious that they mean i'm getting rid of these cards give me two more cards kind of thing Mm -hmm. so everyone can kind of play the game on autopilot while they're talking um and verve is like what was the last thing you asked him or said uh i just said just uh yeah we just started recently well um i did hear that Heard there's a lot going on, you know. We we still hear tell of what kind of things uh, some of our friends get up to, you know, after they go on to do other things. Has it been treating you well? Yeah, yeah, well enough. Well, um, I'm sure you remember that uh, things didn't end super great, and uh, we're figuring some things out. The uh, the other people around the table are all kind of like being quiet, you know, waiting for them to talk. And uh, Jalen just says, uh, like, as she's very merrily, you know, playing the card game is like, oh, come on. This is something to be excited about. Why are you all like corpses? Jalen will turn to you, Rock, and just say, Rock. There's a golden opportunity available to everyone in this room and 
they thought to reach out to you because you have some very special things available. Uh, I do? Oh, yes, of course. Well, two things um, that mean a whole lot. One um, is that your captain runs a ship that can get places around gates. Yeah, expensive as hell, costs a lot of fuel, but we can. Oh, yes, yes, we know. Um, quite a game changer that could be. And also, we have uh, heard tell that there's a new force on the board. I don't know how well you know them, but uh, we've heard through the grapevine that um, you might be friendly uh, with this group. How much do you know about the Noblesse Affair? Uh, not much, I have to admit. Really? A little bit. We did meet up with them at one point. Oh, well, great. So you know someone from there, right? I recall the, the two people we met. Goes, yeah. Great. Because we're also going to need some contacts with them. That's where I come in. Partially, yes. Uh, Kato will just speak up. They will say, Listen, Rock, we're planning a real dangerous mission, and we want to know if you're in or out. I, I can't just say yes or no anymore without knowing what's going on. <laughs> That's the problem, isn't it? I mean, not for me. Verve, like, calmingly holds out a hand gesture. Um, listen, Rock. There's something very important happening very soon. And we're putting together all the resources we have on hand to take advantage of it. And for it, we need some things. And a few more friends could really help us accomplish this. I can give you some more information, but I need to know that even if you don't want to be on board, what we say in here doesn't leave this room. Yeah. I, mean, I can vibe with that. We are going to be. We're going all in, Rock. Fittingly, motions towards the casino. Ever since things ended badly, we've been irrelevant. We haven't really been able to accomplish much. But there is an opportunity on our doorstep. One dangerous some would say impossible mission, that if we succeed, we would be rocketed from a relevance to one of the major players on the board again. And we would be willing to pay well to anyone who can help us accomplish that. We really need to pull every resource available. So who are we going to be getting in trouble with? I assume same corpos? This is why it's a big gamble. We're going after Corsac. Corsac? Mm-hmm. That's a big gamble. It is. And you think the Noblest Affair are going to want anything to do with that? We're hoping. Are you even interested? Because it's a, it's a big deal. I just look over at Torse. Torse like looks um overwhelmed a little bit, but not like in a put off kind of way, but like I wasn't expecting this kind of way. She just looks at you and like shrugs. Let's let's say yes for now. Tangen tangentially. Uh I, I still need to talk to my crew, but I can't make this kind of decision on my own. Understandable. 
Let me introduce you to the rest of our group here. Obviously, you already know Kato and Jalen. Uh, this is Chris Tilton, Killis, Andrade Nico, and you are Sill. They're my closest uh, group here, and each one of them represents uh, either a crew or a group of crews that's all going to be taking part in this operation. Everyone here is putting something towards this effort, and it's maybe the largest operation we've ever done. This is it. If we succeed here, we will be one of the largest, most influential groups. If not, we'll probably get stomped out. As you know, Corsac has about seven capital class flagships in their fleet. They are terrifying. No one ever wants to see one. And they usually never leave the core. In fact, they're kind of a symbol. They show how much power Corsac has. We found out they're building an eighth. Oh, no. And you want to take it? We are going to steal it. Jalen chuckles under her breath a little bit and says, that's where we come in and where hopefully your friends in the Noblesse Affair can help out. We know that they have access to some things the rest of the sector has been a little short on recently. I bet you know a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, listen, Rock. If we succeed, and this is a big if, it takes a lot to supply a ship that large. And we're going to need contacts who can get us what we need to outfit it. Through our contacts with affiliation, he gestures over at Jalen. Jalen kind of, she does a, like a little mock bow kind of thing when she's referenced to has gotten us access to techs and people who have trained up a lot of our people on how this stuff works and how to control it. And we've been training for this for months. We have enough people to crew it and get it somewhere out of sight, out of mind, if we can get it. But it's going to be a big operation to pull off. And that's where we're hoping you can help us. We haven't talked in a long time, and you just come out of the blue and throw this at me? I wouldn't try to pull you back in if I didn't think I needed your help so bad. No, I'm sure you do. If you're going to pull something like this off, and I bet the Noblest Affair would be interested in somebody that has control of a capital ship, if you're able to manage it. Hell, it doesn't even cause them any kind of issue if you can't. It's not like they fuel you ahead of time. And that's the thing. We just need contacts. People to know, people who can help us. Keep it supplied and under the radar. You've worked with affiliation before. You know that they're good at supplying things. They've used you to supply things under the radar before. We're going to use them for a lot of that. But the Noblesse Affair has access to stuff that uh, the rest of the sector has been lacking on. We know about what they've been doing. They've been blowing up mines left and right, depriving everyone of Iridium Alum. And I'm sure that means that they have a stockpile of the stuff. All right, what's our job? What do we do? <sighs> we need another team. Another team of people who, well, let's face it, a cut above. We need elites. We need people who can get in around the normal defenses and help our people get in place and take down some defenses so we can wash in, boost the ship, and get out. 
we need elites smash cut to chimera eating tuna from a can in the middle of the casino <laughs> comet drunkenly yelling at people while Diane's trying to gather them up hey i have a little i have a little more class than that <laughs> we're your guys <laughs> <laughs> astro bursts through the door is this where the spies <laughs> that's about right <laughs> Uh, Meanwhile, uh, Dine drags him back out of the room. No, it's another room down. Okay, okay. I mean, we. If you have details, I, I'd love to hear them. I I can't say that we're in for sure, but I. I'm not a part of this anymore, but I am interested, and I do want to see you guys succeed. <clears throat> we are mercenaries, and you know that means. That we need to get paid for this. By the end of this, we'll be able to get you paid. And Kato kind of like at, at this just kind of scoffs, kind of like looks angrily at their cards as they just fold whatever hand they're on. Listen, when this is all over, we're going to wield a special amount of influence going to be able to get things done one of these things showing up unexpected can turn tides all over the place and how much do you bet corsac isn't going to want to jump out with their entire fleet into the middle of nowhere to take care of this kind of thing you think they're really going to pull back things from the core when the federation is out there and they've been testing each other's borders forever we get one of these they're going to want to play it down no one knows that there's another capital ship being built right now, except the people working on it and our spies. If we get this thing, we can make a difference. I assume you've set up distractions in other systems to keep them busy while you're doing this? Yeah, that's Killis's job. Killis, she's a kind of mousy woman uh, with like long black hair. Um, she's wearing the same kind of fatigues that everyone else is wearing. Um, she raises her hands and she goes, yeah, I have a uh, cruise, five different ones, all in uh, near, near places that Corsac has an interest in. We're going to operate a uh, simultaneous disruption effort at the same time when we're ready to start things off. So no reinforcements, communications cut off? That's the plan. Ultimately, we're not looking for you to steal the ship itself, Rock. We need someone who can get past the defenses in that system. And that means not going through the gate. Get behind them, land on the planet undetected, and take out their communications before they can phone for help. So we don't need to take direct part in the actual hijack of the ship. We're just there for the communications disruption. That's right. All of our crews are on hand. The ship itself is being built in a space dock above the planet. When the signals go I'm down... I'm assuming I look over at Torse and she's got like an iPad out and is like writing this down <laughs> yeah, or something. She's, she's, she is very quickly like taking note of like all the details of the job. Yeah. I mean, it's possible, I suppose. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to my crew. But you didn't need nine people here to come ask me that. This isn't just for you, Rock. We also needed a place to meet. And, well... Like I said, Jalen's been helping us get supplied for this. This was her idea. Wanted everyone to meet back up again. Jalen just kind of like smiles at everyone. Yeah. If you're going to help out and you want in on this, we're going to need to know soon, within the week. We're getting things mobilized now. And with or without you, 
We have to try for this. It's our only opportunity we're ever going to get at this. All right. All right, I'll talk to my crew. That's all we ask. All right, and depending on how long you want to stay, they will continue to play cards. Um, Jalen. I just lay down the winning hand and then step. <laughs> stand up <laughs> yeah absolutely you lay down the winning hand uh you take the couple of token chips that were in the center of the bat and just put them in front of your seat as uh you stand up torse stands up with you kind of like she like not knowing protocol just kind of like nods at everyone <laughs> like in their direction like like almost like bow nods like thanks to everyone as uh, she follows you out of the room all right. And on that thrilling uh, admission of what's going on and what job they want you for, we're going to call that session here. Uh, we can uh, figure Oof. out all of our players, where they all stand, what you all want to do next time as you determine whether or not this is uh, a little too risky for your blood. You want to do something else or uh, what you're going to do about all this. And I'll have to explain what the Aster Uprising is. Yep. Have fun. <laughs> I, I thought I about taking saying, I keep thinking you're saying Astro Uprising. And I'm like, yes, yeah, what is that? Like, yes. I can only imagine the first time Rock says it to you, you will ask that. The Astro <laughs> Uprising? Uprising? Yeah. I've already risen. <laughs> I thought about taking notes on this, but I feel like it's a lot more interesting to take notes based on Rock's perspective of the events. That makes more sense. Yeah, you yeah. don't you don't know any of these people or what they're doing. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. All well, right. Exciting. That'll be uh, that'll be it for today's session, everyone. And uh, we'll meet back to talk about this next time. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.